Now, by a show of hands, who here knows what the World Juniors are? Please put up your hand. <laughs> by a show of hands, who here does not know? For those that just raised your hand, the World Juniors is an international ice hockey tournament. It takes place all around the world. It's for guys 20 and under representing their country. It's some of the most exciting hockey that you're ever going to see. Because a lot of these guys, they get drafted into the NHL. And it's a tradition in my family to watch this tournament on TV over the holidays. It starts on Boxing Day, it goes into the New Year's, and every year my family and I, we sit down together and we watch this tournament on TV. Well, there's one year we're watching, my dad notices there aren't very many people in the audience. The tournament's being held somewhere in Europe, there just simply aren't people in the arena. So he looks into it, and he finds out the following year, the tournament is going to be held in the Czech Republic. He also founds out that it's cheaper to fly my entire family of five to Europe to pay for all of our accommodations, for all of our food, for tickets to every single playoff game than is for one set of tickets when the tournament is held in North America. <laughs> so when my dad asked me, do you want to go to the Czech Republic and watch the World Juniors? I said yes! I knew that was an opportunity waiting to be seized. So it's December 31st, it's 2008, it's New Year's Eve, we're in the Czech Republic. I'm with my family, and we're staying in Prague, but all the games are about an hour train ride in a small town called Pardubice. And we walk into this arena, we're wearing our Canadian jerseys, and that's when we realize we weren't the only ones with this idea. <laughs> there were 5,000 other Canadians already inside! We were greeted by a sea of red and white. I was halfway across the world, and yet I felt right at home. And that night, we beat Denmark four to one. And is there anyone from Denmark in the crowd? Sorry. <laughs> it was the last game of the round, Robin. We were undefeated going into the playoffs. So this arena, it explodes. There's 5,000 Canadians that stream out of the arena, and they're happy, they're singing, they're laughing, they're drinking, and they're heading towards the train station. And this communist era style train eventually rolls up. It's very bare and minimalist. And the very last car stops in front of my family and me. It's very important to know that this last car is also the bar car. <laughs> So we pile on, and on the right there are seats for two, one by one, and on the left there are seats for four, two by two, all the way down. But at the very far end of the car is the bar service, and those big tables, they're already taken up. So my family and I, we divide ourselves amongst the tables for two. My parents sit down, my two older brothers sit down, and I sit down by myself. And I take out my trusty pack of playing cards with the intent to practice. However, before I can, before I can even shuffle the cards, a gentleman approaches me. He's wearing a Canadian jersey, and he asks if he can sit down. Naturally, I say yes. His name is Bill. He's a lawyer. He's in his 50s. He has long hair. He's from Saskatoon. <laughs> that shouldn't be so funny. <laughs> and we start talking. We start talking about the game that we just watched, the fact that we're in the Czech Republic, where we're from, things of that nature. And as we're talking, Bill's eyes notices the deck of playing cards on the table. He sees me, this young kid. He knows that we're on the bar card and says, hey kid, uh, how about a friendly wager? Do you want to cut to high card? Aces are high, low man has to buy the drinks. <laughs> At this point, he has absolutely no idea that I'm a magician! I recognize this as an excellent opportunity to have some fun. <laughs> I look him in the eyes and I pretend to think about it. Uh, sure. <laughs> as long as I get to cut first. Naturally, he says yes. And I begin shuffling the cards. And as I'm shuffling, a playing card spins out of the deck. It slides across the table and it stops in between his resting palms. And at first he thinks, you know, this is some freak of nature, some fluke, until a second card spins out, followed by a third card, followed by a fourth card, all making a nice, neat little pile in between his hands at the edge of the table. <laughs> and at this point, Bill's curiosity is bubbling. He needs to know. And he flips them over to find the one, the two, the three, the four aces. 
Ay, sí. Well, after a very long moment, Bill finally musters up the courage to say, I guess I owe you a drink. <laughs> I take the cards back, I give them a quick shuffle, and, and we keep talking. I, let, I give Bill a moment just to process what just happened to him. And as this is happening, the line for the bar, it's getting longer and longer and longer. It's getting closer and closer to my table. And there's a young man. His name is Carl, he's 23 at the time. He's walking to join the end of that line. But before he can, he sees the playing cards. He sees this young kid. He knows we're on the bar card. And he says, hey kid, would you like to cut the high card? Aces are high. Low man has to buy the drinks. <laughs> so I look over at Bill, who doesn't say anything. I look back and Carl says, sure as long as I get to cut first. <laughs> Naturally, he says yes. <laughs> so I cut the cards, but I don't just cut them once, I cut them four times. And at this point, Carl's like, dude, what are you doing? You know you're only supposed to cut them once. And I'm like, Carl, but what if I have the one, the two, the three, the four aces? And at this point, Carl loses it. Oh my God, get this, get a drink, holy sh Things of that nature. Now, both these gentlemen, they fell victim to judging a book by its cover. They had absolutely no idea that I was a magician. They had no idea what I was capable of. Now, the table across from me, that table of four, they've seen everything. <laughs> they know something is up. They look beyond my age, and they wave me over. They say, kid, you get over here. Show us what you can really do with that deck of cards. And I do. I perform magic for the remaining 45 minutes of this train ride for the family. And while this is happening, Bill, the lawyer, he's gotten up and he's found my father. And they start talking. And Bill asks, do you know who your son's performing for right now? No. Um, family on vacation, here to enjoy, enjoy the hockey? I have no idea. And Bill says, no. You see that lady over there? That's Cindy Holland. Those are her two sons, Greg and Brad, her two daughters, Julie and Rachel. The only member of the family that isn't here right now is the father, Ken Holland. He's the general manager of the Detroit Red Wings. He's out scouting players right now. And all of this is unbeknownst to me. They're just a family on the train, an opportunity for me to share some magic with some people to, to brighten their day and an opportunity for me to practice, to improve. I have no idea who they are and what they can do for me. But we have a great time on the train. We promise to see each other at least one more time during the trip. And we do. We, we leave the train ride and that's when my dad fills me in on who these people are. And that's when I make it my mission to see them at least one more time. And, and we do, we spend more time on the train, we go for drinks, we, we watch a hockey game together. And we really have a great time. And we swap contact information, we promise to keep in touch. But then the tournament ends, we, we part our separate ways. And I don't hear anything from the Hollands for a very long time. Not until August, when Cindy gives me a phone call. She tells me that in September she's having a party, that she wants me to be her guest of honor, to perform magic for her friends and her family. And I say, of course, I would love to. But is it okay if my parents can come? <laughs> because at the time, I was 16 years old and I did not have a driver's license. <laughs> Thank you. And of course, she says yes. So on a Tuesday in September, my parents pick me er up early from school and we drive down to the States. Now for those that don't know, there is a tradition in the NHL that the winning team of the Stanley Cup, everyone gets it for one day. And when I say everybody, I mean everybody. All the players, all the staff, all the management, everybody. So for the course of the summer, the Stanley Cup will fly all around the world just so that everyone gets it for one day. Well, in September, it was Ken Holland's day. He was having a party and we were on our way. We're driving through the, the suburbs. We're trying to find this house and there it is. 
We knew we found the place because the Stanley Cup was on a table on his front lawn. <laughs> Friends and family were coming from all over to take photos with it. The guy with white gloves, he was there. <laughs> and I got to perform close-up magic for them. I got to walk around and share uh, neat little tricks with small groups at a time. And at the very end of the night, I shared something special with them. And it's one of my favorite pieces that I do. And I, I wish I had the time to share it with you now because it is the trick that put me in the hospital. <laughs> Now, if you were to ask me as a 16-year-old how card tricks, or if card tricks were to get me to the Stanley Cup, I would not have believed you. <laughs> However, there's one part of this story that I haven't told you yet. Because remember I told you I took out those playing cards with the intent to practice? Well, there's one thing that I wanted to practice. There's one thing that I've been practicing for the last six months. It was the one thing that I was going to practice whether or not Bill and Carl asked me. And that one thing was how to cut to the four aces. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. My name is Keith Brown. In this amazing story, it taught me three things. It taught me to expect beyond expectation to be other oriented. It's not about what someone can do for you, but what you can do for them. And thirdly, most importantly, is to seize opportunity. And to do that, you need to be prepared opportunity. So uh, when it does come up, you can rise to the occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Keith Brown. Thank you so much for your time.